Travis here with ProNav Marine and today we're going to do a short video to cover using the new ProNav Motion handheld remote controller. I'd like to encourage you to check out our previous video which shows the first step you need to do when you receive this remote out of the box and that is the network configuration. Uh, the network configuration allows you to pair this remote to, the, to your ProNav Angler GPS system. The rest of the information in this video will explain how this remote operates, what the buttons do, how to pair it to your device, and how to shut it off. When you receive the ProNav Motion Controller from us, it will be charged when it leaves our facility. The ProNav Motion Controller will be in a low power or sleep state. When the remote's in its low power sleep state, a full charge in the battery is going to typically last for over a month in standby mode. Standby mode means you're not using the remote, so it's going to hold that charge for roughly a month or longer, um, depending on conditions. When you're using the remote in continuous use, you can expect to get a full day or up to two full days of use out of the remote. And this can be optimized by shutting the remote off or putting it into its sleep mode between use when you're not using it. One of the nice things about this remote is that it also has this low power sleep mode that it enters automatically when you're not using it to help conserve that battery and make sure that this remote's always going to be charged when you need to use it. Just a reminder, when you're using the ProNav Motion Controller and when you're going to charge that up, always use the charge cable that was provided and the 12 volt plug um, that was provided with the remote by ProNav. In order to wake the handheld controller up and get it out of a sleep state, I'm going to hit either the Bluetooth or the FN keys down on the bottom left and right corners of the remote. And you'll see when I press them, I'm just going to get a single red flash up top. And after I wake the remote up out of that low power sleep state, any button on the remote will trigger a red flash. Once the remote's woken up, you're going to have about 30 seconds to go into the Bluetooth advertising state or else this remote will automatically go back into its deep sleep low power mode. To get this remote into the Bluetooth advertising state, I'm going to press on the Bluetooth key on the bottom left corner of the remote and I'm going to hold that for approximately 5 seconds. Once that blue light starts blinking, this remote is now in an advertising state. Once the remote is advertising, that means it's sending its Bluetooth signal out. If we have this properly configured with our ProNav GPS, this blue light will soon turn solid, indicating that we've got this uh, paired uniquely to our GPS unit. The remote will stay in this advertising state for approximately two minutes. Um, during this two minutes, you basically need to make sure you've got power to your ProNav GPS, and you need to make sure that you've got this paired through your network configuration settings. Um, so if you haven't seen how to do that, take a look at our previous video covering the ProNav Motion network configuration. The remote is fully operational. I can use any of the keys to control that motor. Um, when I press any one of these keys, you're going to see I get a red button flash. Initially, once we've got the remote connected up, the motion drive button, that's the green button located in the center of the remote here, this button has not yet been activated. Um, as soon as I press this green button, that drive button wakes up. The drive button allows me to use the motion point drive and point jog features with my trolling motor and the ProNav system. So using that green button with either the heading lock mode or the anchor mode, I can simply point my remote in a direction and press it and my motor will turn in that direction that I've pointed and adjust either my heading or my position um, just simply based on my gesture. One thing to note about the motion drive button is that when we wake up the motion feature it is going to use slightly more battery than not using it. So this green button and the motion drive feature is designed to time out after approximately 15 minutes without use of the motion features. Another quick note on the motion features is that if we're using that green button, we're going to want to make sure that we calibrate both the ProNav GPS, which typically your GPS is already calibrated if you've been using it. I will need to calibrate this remote. To calibrate the motion remote, we've got a short tutorial video out there um, showing how to do so, but basically we're going to press and hold that green button and we're going to maneuver the remote in sort of a figure eight pattern in order to get all the compass and sensors in here calibrated in order to give you a more accurate result when you're pointing this remote and gesturing to drive your motor. Keep in mind this motion drive button does nothing when you're just in manual control. Um, this motion drive button currently works when you're in either the compass heading lock, which is the north 
the M symbol on the right side of the remote, or the GPS vector, that's the uh, arrow and two lines on the right side of the remote below the north. And the motion drive button will also work when you're in the anchor mode. That's the anchor icon on the left side of the remote towards the bottom here. Um, if we're just using manual control, um, so we're not in heading lock, we're not in anchor, we're not following a route, I can use the left and right arrows uh, and the plus and minus here to adjust the direction uh, that the motor is pointing as well as the thrust or speed of that trolling motor. Another nice feature on the remote here is the rabbit icon up in the top right side. The rabbit icon basically takes your current thrust or speed setting and it automatically jumps that to max thrust on that trolling motor. So there's times where you're going along and you just need to really quickly get that trolling motor to max thrust. I'm going to hit that rabbit button. It's going to increase the thrust to maximum 100%. And when I hit it again, it's going to bring that thrust setting back to where I was prior to hitting that button. So one of the nice things about the remote is that it will automatically shut itself off after an hour if you don't press any buttons and if you're not using it. This is intended to conserve battery so that your in internal battery to this remote is going to last you longer and you're going to get more continuous fishing use out of it. Again, the standby for this battery when it goes into its low power deep sleep mode is going to be over a month. So I can leave this sitting in my tackle box or in the dash of the boat for a month and go back and still expect to have some charge if I left it there um, you know, in a fully charged or you know, partially charged state. We do recommend a maintenance charge on this even when you're not using it at least at an interval of about once a month. This is a great practice even during winter storage for example. When you go to store this for the winter, bring it inside, plug it in and get it fully charged and put it away fully charged until you use it again. When you pull this back out of storage at the end of winter, uh, once again just give it a full charge and then start using it. That's, that's best practice, that's going to help keep this battery in great shape for you for a long time to come. Another way to conserve and maximize the battery here is I can actually shut it off and put it into that low power deep sleep mode myself by pressing on the top left and top right buttons, that's the mark button and the rabbit button, simultaneously. So I'm going to press and hold those two buttons and you'll see that the red light flashes and the blue light goes out. And now when I hit any of the buttons below, uh, aside from Bluetooth or FM, if I hit any of the other buttons, I'm not going to get a flash. That means that remote is off now. So that's a quick overview on the ProNav Motion remote control. We've got our previous video in this series showing how to set up the network configuration. That's the initial configuration of this remote with your GPS unit. And we'll have some following videos showing you more about this out on the water. Thanks for taking a look at this video and stay tuned for more.